Take a look at this job we did in Simi Valley. Right now, we just pulled up. We're on a residential leak detection. We're going to use our leak stick. We're going to show you how we're going to get this one done. So I just showed you on the meter. We'll flip back to it. We have 0, 0.0. It's showing use right now. Everything is off in the house. There is no water being used in the house, but we have a constant run. Therefore, we're going to perform a quick leak detection and show you how we get it done. Check it out. So the first video we're shooting of using the hydro stick. The hydro stick is dynamic in a sense that it's a rechargeable battery and it's everything in one combined unit. So we're going to show you how we use our probe. We're going to walk the property and then we're going to figure out what we got going on to actually pinpoint. And that's how we're going to get started. So right now we're just going to screw in our probe. We're going to plug in our headphones and we're going to fire this thing up and move on. So the probe screwed in. Headphones get plugged right into this headphone jack right here, and we're ready to walk and do what we got to do. We're going to show you how we take care of the exterior of the house, then we're going to hug the house, then we're going to go in the house, and we're going to do it systematically. So check it out. So now we're going to walk the property. And walking the property, we're actually looking for everything. We're looking for hose bibs. We're looking for landscape. We're looking for irrigation valves. We're looking for spigots. We're looking for buried off, capped off, any kind of old plumbing. In this case, there was an actual pool that was once here on this property, a very small pool. We're looking for autofills. Here we get up to a sprinkler valve, and these things leak all the time. You need to listen to every one of them. If there's water running through, you'll hear it. Again, this is going to lead us around, and we're very systematic of how we handle the perimeter of a house. Well, we're going to walk and we're going to hug the house, we call it. We're going to stay on the exterior of the house and we're going to listen. Again, look around, see if we missed anything when we walked the exterior. But here we have a hose bib. We're going to listen to that hose bib and we're going to move on. Here we have sprinkler valves. There are sprinkler valves all over this property. We're going to listen to those sprinkler valves and we're going to listen to any existing plumbing that this house has, which is going to lead us around to the front of the house. This is where we have the main shutoff to the house, and then we're going to walk. Again, staying on the exterior now of the front of the house because this has a courtyard, so we're going to walk it both. Again, more hidden sprinklers in the bush. So what I want to do real quick before I even go in this house is we have a shutoff. So as we walk the property, we learn more about the plumbing of that specific house. We have a shutoff uh, to the house. So from the street, Coming right up to the front of the property here, we're going to shut this down and then we're going to monitor our meter one more time after we shut this. And that, if that's running right now, that'll tell us that our leak is somewhere between this and the actual street itself. Let's go check it out. And it's not running, which means that our leak is somewhere under the slab, probably inside the house. Okay. In this case, we listened to all the sprinkler valves that we had. However, if you could isolate sprinkler valves, if you could isolate a swimming pool autofill, if you could isolate some of those other things, you'll be able to literally come back to this meter and tell that meter is going to tell you whether what you shut off is actually leaking. So when we shut off to the house, and again, we have to make sure we turn it back on because when we listen, we need it to be actually leaking again. So. We ruled out all the irrigation by listening to those valves. When those valves leak, and they do very often, when we listen to them, they're really loud. And that'll tell you whether it's just releasing water to uh, a head, to a low point that you're not seeing, to a real green grassy area. Let's move on from that. Now we're going to go inside the house. So as we, again, we walk a property, we do it systematically, not just to... to do it for our own, you know, we're not, customer, customers sometimes think, what are you walking the exterior of the property? Because there might be a hose bib in the back. There might be something that you don't know. So when we walk a property on the exterior, like we just did, we walk the wider on the outside, then we hug the house. And when we come in, we always stay right. Again, we have to be able to access every nook and cranny and be able to see everything that we need to see. And by staying right, it systematically brings you all the way in the house, through every room, and all the way back out check it out so that's going to lead us when we get in the house we're going to make a right hard turn and it's going to take us through the garage we're looking for any existing plumbing that might be here again we have a freezer again that would just create a drain there's no ice maker there's nothing but we have a washer dryer set up 
We're going to put down our short probe and we're going to actually listen. We don't like to have the long probe on when we're walking through a house. When we get on the interior, we don't want to scratch drywall or anything. So now we're to our short probe, we're listening on the hot water heater, and that's going to take us around the actual house staying right now it looks like a living room that we just passed but we're looking for wet bars stuff that might have existed in the past we have an island over here we're going to look at that island there's no sink on this island but look underneath to make sure now we're going to get to the sink and we're going to touch the hot and cold shutoffs again that noise will transfer if it's leaking underneath there which is going to bring us all the way around and we're going to come to our first bathroom so right now we're going to introduce this noise to you. We're getting a little bit of noise. It's not the loudest I've heard, but we're getting that rushing water when I touch the cold water side. Remember, I'm on the cold water side of this and I'm having some rushing water. Next, we're going to go to the angle stop of this toilet. And now we're really loud right here. So there's a good chance right now that our leak is going to be literally underneath the plumbing, underneath the slab by this angle stop. Again, I'm picking it up some of it, but it's not as loud over there. So we're gonna teach you. First of all, we're gonna finish the rest of the house. Then we're gonna show you what we do to back ourselves up with what we're actually hearing. So really loud, not so loud. I, I might've started picking some stuff up, but I didn't hear much from the other rooms. This I'm hearing. So let's finish walking the house. So this one should be loud too because it's backing up to the other unit, but this is more towards the sink of the other unit. So now when we get in the shower, we're going to hear and we're going to touch those valves, but we're thinking that that other stub up is on the other side of that shower wall. We're going to keep touching every probe to walk through this house and listen to the rest of this house. The biggest mistake guys can make is that they don't finish out a job. They just find the leak and they stop. In this case, we're gonna walk it all the way through, listen to everything, and then move on. So when we walked this whole entire house, I didn't really get much transfer noise over here. I first listened to the sink in that guest bathroom and it was somewhat loud. I touched the angle stop of the toilet, it was really loud. And then I have something plumbing right on the other side of that wall. So now I know that my leak is gonna be somewhere under the slab in that area, that general facility. So now we're gonna to go to part two. And part two is, is we're gonna hook up to the cold water side to the most convenient place that we can, which will probably be a hose bib. We'll hook up to a hose bib, we'll shut the house down on the water side in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna inject air. And that air is gonna get into that saturation boiling point, And then we're gonna listen with our disc and we're gonna put ourselves right over the leak. All right, so what we have right here, we have our, our cheap six gallon pancake compressor. What we're gonna do is, is we're gonna inject air. So we're gonna shut it down at the front of the house. We're gonna inject air into the cold water side. That air is gonna go down into all the cold water pipes. And wherever there's a leak, it's gonna let the air out of the leak, and then it's gonna boil through the saturation of the previous water that was leaking. So check it out, see how we get it done. Have that hooked up. We're hooking it up to our pressure rig. Right now, we're not bringing any water in, but we're gonna bring air in. And we're gonna bring it right into this hose bib that we have right here on the side of the house. So we're just gonna screw right up to this. And go back, we're gonna shut the house off. Now we have no more water coming back in. And now, what we're going to do is, is uh, one guy is going to be injecting water. This is important. This is a two-man process right here. Whoever's running this can't let that pressure get too high. they got to be careful. We're not dealing with any plugs here. We're dealing with threaded fittings. However, always use safety when using the pressure rig. So, again, we're going to be giving a quick burst of air. Quick, shit, quick, like that. When that, he's doing that, I'm going to be over there listening and check it out. So he's hitting it with quick bursts of air, and this is what we're actually hearing over here, the boil. Again, it's loud, it's not as loud, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna back up and listen on the other side of this. Again, there's, we know there's plumbing right on the app back side of this, this unit. So we have another bathroom here, and right behind that toilet is the shower floor. And it's screaming right here. This is the sound of that actual boil. 
We marked it out. So a quick recap on how we got this leak detection done. We walked the exterior, then we hugged the house, then we went in the house and went right. Then when we got by that bathroom, we were hearing something by the sink. However, it was louder by the angle stop. What we wound up doing was listening in that area, but we went to the back wall. There was bathrooms, back-to-back -back bathrooms in that situation. By doing so, we heard that distinct boil sound that we introduced the sound for you guys to hear. When we introduced that sound, we heard that great boiling sound. We put a tape mark on it. That's where it has to get excavated. That's where the leak is. For more information, visit leaktronics.com and always check out our YouTube channel.